Hey guys, it's Mariah. Don't worry, I do not have the Rona. I got tested, so I'm okay. But today we are going to be with my big brother, Pastor Morgan. Hey guys. And we'll be interviewing a very special guest who was a rock star and musician traveling around the world for 30 years trying to search out what the meaning of life was, addicted to drugs, alcohol, and then he encountered Jesus. So today we'll be talking about his testimony. It's my honor to welcome Nico Darnese. Nico, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you guys for having me. Well, it's awesome that we can have you share your testimony. But before we get started, Morgan, would you like to pray for us? Yeah, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much uh, for this opportunity. Thank you for Nico and just for all that he's been doing uh, for your glory. And I know that he knows it's not his own strength, but it's you in him, Christ in him, just moving and uh, like he was saying, just being led by the Holy Spirit. So I just pray that you would continue to lead him and to guide him and to lead us and guide us as we uh, talk with him and converse and just uh, talk about his testimony and the things that he's been doing. Um, and thank you, God, for this ministry opportunity and all the opportunities that he he has. And it's like he was telling us just the, uh, I think, five people already healed just at Walmart. <laughs> and so thank you, God, for that. And I pray that we would uh, be encouraged to walk out our faith, to not just talk about you, Jesus, or not just claim you and uh, just be a Christian in name only, but that we would go out and that we would actually walk as your disciples, as your children. And so I thank you, God, that you've given us your light. Thank you, God, that you've uh, filled us with your love. And I just pray that anyone, who, everyone who's watching this, God, would be filled with your Holy Spirit and just be touched by you, that you would just speak those rhema words, that this would be an encouraging message, even as we just uh, hear of what you have done in Nico's life. And so I just pray that you would bless him, bless his ministry, and uh, that any that people would be able to reach out to him and that he would be able to share the love of you and continue to do that. And we just uh, ask for a blessing on this time and upon the listeners right now. And it's in Jesus' mighty name I pray. And all God's people said, Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 All right. So we're going to start off with, well, we're telling everyone this is a conversation. So we're mm -hmm. just going to have you share your testimony. So first question is, where were you born? Hello, everybody. My name is Nico, and I was born in Italy in a small town in the south near Rome. Mm. Awesome. And uh, I grew up in England. I lived in Germany, in Denmark, a little bit in Finland, and I live in the U.S. from 14 years now. Wow, that's wow. awesome. So when did you get into music? How, what did that look like, and what was your first instrument that you ever played? Uh, I played keyboard when I was four years old, three, four years old. I always played music. My dad owned a radio station, so I always had instruments in my house. That's awesome. Mm. So you started um, keyboard, and then what you're known for or what you, when you were in a rock band was bass guitar. So did you just yeah. always like bass, or how did you get into that? I got into bass because it's funny. Uh, there were not so many musicians in the in the village I was born, mm -hmm. and there were everyone played drums or guitar, and <laughs> I was not that good with the guitar. So I, no one wanted to play the bass, and I just <laughs> grabbed the bass and. Yeah, that's awesome. That's funny. There is a there's a Calvary pastor. Um, I think his name is Danny Fusco, Fusco, and he was saying he plays bass pretty well. And he was saying, yeah, you know, I picked up a bass because they needed a bass player in in my friend's band. And then uh, I was just trying to learn it. And then the next day I had a gig, you know, it's just like, and that's kind of what Mariah did because she's a bass player. And you just pick it up and start playing. But yeah, it's pretty cool how people get into bass though. Sometimes people just play the that's me. normal I one, two. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can play a lot more stuff. So yeah. yeah, that's cool that you can, now you can use those gifts for the glory of God. So yep. yeah. yeah, yeah. Tell them about, um, yeah, tell them about the band and everything mm -hmm. that you were in and how you, like the, how maybe dark it got in that. So, yeah, explain that to yeah, us a so little bit. Yeah, so I I just want to say that I used music to travel. Mm -hmm. I used music for money. I used music to attract people, mm -hmm. attract girls. And uh, I was always rejected when I was young. Later mm -hmm. on, I realized that I was rejecting everyone. 
So I used music to prove to my parents and everyone else that I was worth doing something in life. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I started playing in Italy with the bands and things were going well. At some point I moved to England with only 100 euro. I didn't know a word of English. I just wanted to play to the next level yeah. band. And I started playing industrial metal. Start getting into heavy music. You know, those thoughts in my head were telling me, uh, if you play heavy music, you will be a man. Mm. You know, so I had the shift happening from being a youth, a young guy, to become a man, and that music was a part of it. Mm. I was part of the deception, Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. So, and it was probably because, like, a lot of people who maybe have been rejected or feel insecure. Like you said, they use certain outlets and things to, you said, to be a man or be tough and strong. So mm-hmm. that for you was probably heavy metal, rock music. And was that the bands that you were in? Yeah, it's, uh, I always played heavy music. Yep. And mm-hmm. I got into heavier and heavier and heavier music while doing it. I was sucked in and they didn't even realize it. In fact, when I moved in the U.S. 14 years ago, I started with the... Uh, an industrial band that was very evil. Mm. I didn't know the lyrics that well. My English was not that well, but I can tell it was very evil. Mm. I remember during rehearsal, I could feel the darkness entering the room. Mm. I could feel the spiritual world entering the physical world while playing Mm. it. I could see people getting angry while we were playing and changing the way they are interacting with life, Mm -hmm. just listening to our music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what are some uh, testimonies or stories that you saw when you were in the darkness and in the band where you saw those demonic, like you could say you could feel that mm. that darkness, but you also have a story I heard of uh, your friend, right? When Yeah, basically, I was doing yoga and I was crippled. Mm. I could barely walk for yeah. many years. I had huge pain in my back. I had a couple of discs moved out of place and... Mm. But when I go on stage, I can jump like an animal. So people will start asking me this question, how do you do it? You you know, people almost have to carry you on stage, but now you can play. (laughs) And my question was always the same. It's like, hey, man, I don't know. I feel I'm possessed. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I thought I was joking in my mind and Mm. I thought I was cool. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, I ended up playing with the big bands. I don't want to say the names now, but probably you guys Mm. know those bands. Mm -hmm. Mm. Um, I ended up playing in super groups too with mm. the biggest musician in the world. Mm. Oh. And uh, I'm not proud anymore about it, but mm. uh, it's part of my testimony. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So I realized that even playing in those bands, I didn't accomplish what I wanted to accomplish mm-hmm. anyway. I wanted to uh, be loved. Mm. And basically what I did, I created an idol out of myself. So the people that loved me, they loved the idea that I created. It. They didn't love my heart. Yeah. So there was always a void into my heart that I needed to fill with the drugs, with the alcohol, with the more and more fame, more and more uh, money or girls, you know, anything that came my way. Mm-hmm. And uh, more I was living that way and more depression came in and more suicidal thoughts came in. Mm-hmm. I remember... I got so bad at some point that I was calling my mom and telling my mom, you should do drugs, you're missing out. Mm. Mm. I was persecuting Christians. I was telling people, you're insane to believe in a book. You know, Jesus was probably drugging people. Mm. That's why they were aware of the spiritual world. I was that kind of guy. So there was nothing good about me, but in my head, I was the goodest guy in the world. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. So you were directly opposing Christianity at that time and God. You were just, yeah, yeah. I, I, I was into New Age. I believed there was a higher form of energy. Mm. I didn't believe in Jesus. I believed Jesus was a prophet or something like yeah. that by yeah. taking psychedelics because yeah. I was doing lots of psychedelics. I ended yeah. up believing that Jesus itself was a mushroom. Yeah. Wow. What do you, you know, say to? I know we're gonna get into the transition of uh, from you in that darkness to Christianity. Um, but before that, what do you say? Because you mentioned New Age. Yeah, we have a lot of guests. There's a lot. Yeah, we've had a lot of guests uh, talking against New Age and stuff. And, and then, yoga. Yeah, my, my wife, she was just talking to a friend. 
and uh, an old friend, and she's been reaching out to her and ministering to her, and she believes that she's like God's in us and that we're God's, Little you know? Gods. So did you kind of believe that at that time, that you were like a God or... There's, I know there's I, a lot of I different forms. I started to believe I was a God. Yeah. But later on, Jesus proved to me the opposite. He was Amen. always with me, helping me. Yeah. Amen. And actually, Amen. I could see a vision, but I want to get there. Uh, so basically, I was into herbs, healthy lifestyle. I was vegan for almost 14 years. Mm. Wow. Uh, I was doing yoga regularly because I was trapped. I was in jail without doing mm. all of those things. I couldn't leave anymore. Yeah. I was doing probably 10 gram to 20 or pot a day by wow. eating it or smoking it. I was uh, I needed to drink a six pack just to get out of my apartment to be able to speak to people because oh. there was a fear of man there. Yeah. You know, and uh, this is a part of new age. It's kind of like uh, we are out of the sieve in ourselves because we are filled with the pride. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to prove that we are wrong, so we mm -hmm. are carrying on mm -hmm. uh, giving food to the lie yeah. to prove that other people are wrong, you know. And basically, we are ending up in this spiral that you're going to always search more and more, more and more knowledge that will lead you to nothing. Mm -hmm. I never had any answers, you know. So mm -hmm. this is the kind of new age I know that people into new age, basically, they, they are searching constantly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and they, they kind of say, oh, everything's everything works kind of. And they are very accepting at times, but then they're like, oh, no, not that. And they're, I just see such uh, such double mindedness and in, in new age people when I talk to them because you say, oh, you said you believe this. And they're like, well, no, I don't believe it like that, you know. And mm -hmm. so they, you just see them just jumping to and fro and they, they're not they're still searching. Yeah. But they don't really admit it. They kind of act like they know something. And their but, life is perfect. Yeah. Like we talked to Doreen Virtue and she was one of the biggest New Age writers. And all she had all these books. But um, she was saying how they want to appear like their life is perfect. Nothing's wrong. When their marriages yeah. are failing, they're committing adultery. They're in like se all the sexual sin. Mm -hmm. They're addicted to drugs, alcohol. They're getting like tempted to want to kill themselves. And one of them also was Stephen Bancars. And he said he would just be driving down the road and he would hear a voice to just say, like, pull into another car or kill yourself. And yet they want to appear like, oh, everything's good. I'm a good person. Mm -hmm. I have so much peace. And yet there's, there's no peace. They're just filled with darkness. And is that what you sa said you were feeling like? It's just... exactly what I felt. I mean, now I can see everything. Looking back, it's like... I can see how much sadness I, I had in my heart. I can see how deceived I was and mm. also I was deceiving other people yeah. mm -hmm. because by lying to myself, I didn't want to admit that I was deceived. Mm. I wanted to make people in my own image. That's what J Satan does, right? Yeah. God mm. created us in his own image, but now I'm playing to be a God and trying to make people in my own image. And in reality, I'm crippled. I can barely walk. I cannot function without drugs or alcohol. Mm -hmm. I cannot function if I don't do those things that are becoming my cage every day, you mm -hmm. know, and there is no freedom. Mm -hmm. No, there's no freedom. And, and then you also, I saw this one interview and people said that um, you played faster and like you were just a crazy and you said that you felt like you were like possessed and you didn't even know the notes and you would just play it. So when you were on stage, was it just that you feel like you were just so given to the demonic and like did you feel like because like when i've just seen videos and stuff of heavy metal rock bands like it's it's scary like the mosh pits people are like punching each other hitting each other like going crazy and like totally worshiping the people on stage so what was that like for you in that moment like did you were you just totally blacked out and you didn't even know what you were doing did you feel that possessed or were you just soaking uh, in all the... Pre pretty things? much. There were moments before going to stage that we had to drink a lot yeah. just to keep the fear tamed, mm. Mm. all the anxieties and all of those. So we use the alcohol and drugs. By the time we go on stage, we are we are transitioning to somewhere else. We mm. Basically, do you know how many times I was so drunk that I blacked out? Hmm. And next day I had to ask my friend, what happened last night? Yeah. And they were telling me the same thing. Hey, man, you got crazy, but that was funny. Yeah. 
So now I know what happened. Basically, demons want us to lose the control so they can take over. Mm -hmm. And this is pretty much what happened on stage. Uh, When I had an encounter with Jesus, I was so shocked. Because he showed me everything. He showed me what the stage really is. Yeah. Basically, you are my sister, you're my brother, but by going on the stage, I put myself in a higher level than mm. you, mm. which yeah. you you are made in image of God, right? Mm-hmm. So when I go on the stage, I'm mocking God. Mm. Mm. I'm yeah. mocking the image of God. I want to be a God, right? And that's what Satan work is. Yeah. Mm. So also by giving the demons the possibility to spiritually control in those frequencies, which is very powerful. Mm. I'm allowing people to, to get possessed. Actually, mm. we, we become like a priest of darkness and mm. we are, uh, when he showed me the mosh pit, that was like, I clicked so much in my head, like the pit, we are sending demons to the pit. Mm. Yeah. yeah. You know, so when yeah. people were, getting that crazy it's because demons are taking over and they want to recreate hell on earth mm. Mm. Yeah, exactly. and then everything else clicked on me it's like they are hurting the body of christ by being aggressive mm. one another right jesus said the law one another but they are like mm. uh, trying to kill each other yeah. you know and it, it, it is just crazy what jesus showed me and i could see the, in my spirit the number of the people i deceived with the music mm. since I started to play and how many people wanted to be like me. Mm. Yep, exactly. I, I, I was on my knee crying and begging for mercy and I said, Lord, I'm never going to play again. You gave me a gift and I used the gift against you. I'm never going to play again. And mm. after seven months, I was with the, the last reformation in New Hampshire uh, in a tent revival. And uh, people were asking me to play on the stage three times. And I said, no, three times. And they were asking me, why you don't want to play? I said, I don't want to be prideful anymore. Mm. That same day, we went outside for outreach to pray for people. And we ended up in a music store. And my friend Brandon was giving me a guitar after another. He wanted to see how I play. So I started playing acoustic guitar. Mm. And those guitars were getting better and better and more expensive. Mm. At some point, they gave me this beautiful guitar. It's like a Taylor guitar. I didn't mm. even want to look at it. It was like almost $2,000 guitar. Oh. <laughs> and I told him, just take it back. Even if I had money, I would never pay this much for this guitar. Mm. When we left the store, I was in a parking lot and I was laughing. I was literally laughing and said, God, if you wanted me to play, give me that guitar. <laughs> if you wanted me to play again, give me that guitar. Those were the words I said. Mm. In the morning, I woke up with a guitar case next to my bed. Oh. <laughs> I opened the case, and there was that exactly guitar. So huh? I closed the case. I tried to sleep again, but I would start trembling, <laughs> trembling and crying. So I open again the case, and I see the guitar, and I see a note. And on the note, there is, my son, I give you this guitar so you can use the gift I gave you. Hmm. Play for me. And it was oh. signed, God. Wow. At that point, I just broke down in tears for half hour, and I was trembling. The presence of God was so powerful. Wow. My, my friend Valen came to the room, and that was his guitar. Valen used to be a drug dealer, and he gave his life to Jesus a couple of years ago, and the Lord took everything away from him. The mm. guitar was the last thing that he had. Wow. So that night, the Lord convicted him to give me his guitar. Wow. <laughs> Wow. And he said, I cried the whole night because I didn't want to give you my guitar and I wanted to make sure that's God. <laughs> and he said, the Lord told me to write your note also. And when I told him, you don't know where I was yesterday, don't you? He said, no, where you were. He said, I was in the store and I prayed for this exactly guitar. He started oh. crying like a baby too. <laughs> wow. So we, we were all crying for three days, you know, because hmm. he, he realized that was God telling him to give me the guitar. Mm-hmm. And I realized that my prayer was answered. Mm-hmm. So all the people that witnessed the miracle were crying too. Yeah. So, yeah, it's amazing how God uses all these people. It's not just, you know, sometimes we're like, what, God, why can't you just, like this one kid was telling me, like, why can't God just come to me? Why does he have to go through people, you know? But you see how God orchestrates all these different things and works through it. 
And yeah, that's such a powerful testimony. I heard about yeah, the guitar, but I didn't I didn't hear that story where like yeah, it was right by your bed with a note. So yeah. <laughs> that was crazy. There are yeah. I cannot count the miracles and the blessing I received since mm-hmm. I give up everything for to follow him and yeah. to do the will of the Father and now I'm realizing more and more that the reason why God made us mm. is to do His will. Amen. He sent us to this world to do only His will. Mm-hmm. And we take life for granted. And we believe that we are in this world to... Uh, I don't even know how to explain because I don't like anything from this world anymore. Mm. You know, we believe that we are in this world to have fun, to, to mm-hmm. experience the worldly thing while... Mm. We are here to save souls, to prevent our yeah. brother and sister to perish in hell. How do you, since you experience more of the world, like drugs and partying and kind of being at the top of your career and everything, what would you tell someone who, because I know a lot of kids, when you talk to them, they kind of want to experience the world. Maybe they were raised up in a Christian household, you know, like us. And sometimes there's that propensity <coughs> to want to see what is happening outside, you know, that we feel like, oh man, we, oh, I'm so sheltered or something. But what, how do you, what, what would you say to someone like that to um, say it's not worth it? The same way, you know? the same thing I wanted to hear when I was in the band. In the mm-hmm. end, remember, I used the music just to attract people, which yeah. means I need the love. I need mm-hmm. to be loved, right? Yeah. And that was just a tool I used in a wrong way. So mm-hmm. doesn't mean that I was happy. Yeah. So if you think about how many people are unhappy and they know inside of them that they are unhappy, mm-hmm. they are just hiding it. So when I approach people now, the first thing come to my mind is what led Jesus to heal the sick was compassion. Mm. In the scripture, we find all the times like what moved Jesus was compassion and he healed all of them. Yeah. So when I approach people, the first thing that is, uh, the Lord is showing me what People are missing in their heart, in their life. Mm-hmm. They gave me a word of knowledge. So when, it's 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 uh, it's interesting because I know already the pain they have in the body or anything they need. And, and also Jesus said that we should walk to demonstrate the power. Mm. So can you imagine before I encountered Jesus, I was in a band. If somebody came to me and showed me the power of God. In the front mm. of my eyes, I would have left everything immediately. Mm. It took me a long time because I never seen that. I was deceived. I, I come from a Catholic background and I never seen the power. Mm. I was asking my parents and my aunts and uncles, it's like, what are those miracles we read in the Bible? And they were telling me, yeah, Jesus used to do them. He died. Mm. Mm. So I ended up believing that this is a fairy tale. Mm. Yeah. So when I approach young people, I heal them. Jesus healed them through me. Mm. Uh, I give them a word of knowledge and they immediately realize it's God speaking and not me. Mm-hmm. So they start to understand that Jesus is real, you know. And, mm-hmm. yeah. So what was, that, what was the turning point uh, where you actually gave your life to God? <laughs> what did that look like? What was that transition? Um uh, two years ago, I started preaching this kind of weird stuff to people. I didn't even know what I was saying, but <laughs> I was trying to tell people that pride is an infection of our spirit, mm. and all the other <laughs> symptoms symptoms are attached to pride. Then I was telling them, when you admit to yourself that you're prideful, this pride is going to leave you. Mm. I didn't know I was preaching repentance in a wrong way, but I was start preaching repentance. The Lord was leading me to approaching people and learn how to preach. Yeah. And uh, there were several things that happened that are very strange. Example, I had a vision of me reading the Bible over and over, and I was rejecting those visions. I was like, wow, what is that book? You know, I I will read when I'm old, but no, now. I know yeah. I will get trapped in this yeah. religion stuff, and <laughs> I don't want to have nothing to do with it. You just get a vision in the middle of the day? About yeah, that? a vision. One day, I remember, I was led to fast for one day. Mm-hmm. So I sit in the middle of the room fasting, and my roommate said, what are you doing? He's like, I'm fasting. Fasting is good for you. And I wanted to start listening to the voice. Mm-hmm. I don't know, but I wanted to start listening to the voice. Was that part and, of the uh, New Age thing, to fast? or No, I was not it, doing yeah. for New Age or any religion. Okay. I was just led to fast for one day. Mm-hmm. I didn't even know why. And that night... I had a powerful vision. Hmm. 
I had a vision of myself when I was seven, eight years old that I was speaking to God at night before I go to bed and I could feel and hear the sound of my tears hitting the pillow. Mm. And I was so in shock. I was like, whoa, I was speaking to God. Mm. And I was in my bed crippled. I could barely walk. So mm. that night was like, whoa, let me try to, to speak to God again. I mean, I was speaking when I was young. Mm. That, that vision was so real, so alive that convinced me to speak to God. So after 40 years, I'm speaking to God now. And what mm. I said, I said, God, if you're real, why don't you take me out of this bed? Why I'm not walking? And next day, I'm just walking like a normal guy. Mm. Mm. And all of my friends are telling me, well, how did you make this? How this happened? And I didn't know to tell them. I just mm. told them, hey, I had a dream. Aliens were performing a surgery in my back. Mm. <laughs> I was on drugs, so I didn't know what to tell them. I couldn't yeah. connect little prayer for the healing, right? Mm. So those those visions were going on and on. And I remember I met a guy 14 years ago. I was working with this guy fixing refrigerators, and I got fired, of course, because I was on drugs. Mm. And uh, for 10 years, I never seen this guy again. After 10 years, he called me and he told me, Hey, bro, I want to meet you. I have something to tell you. I go, all right, let's meet. We made it up, and he told me, I just came out of jail. Mm. I used to be on crystal meth, and I need your help. Mm. I need you to help me out to stay away from crystal meth, and I will give you a free room in my house. I was like, all right. <laughs> I moved in in his house, and uh, what I did the whole day was just like yelling at this guy if he even think about crystal meth. Mm. I'm just yelling at him, you're, you're crazy. You're not going to do math anymore. I love you. <laughs> what I was doing, I was giving him all of my drug of choice. Mm. Any other drug, psychedelic, marijuana, because wow. I thought these were good things. Mm. Those drugs opened my mind, expanded my consciousness. You know, these were the new age, uh, mm. you know, the perception is. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought those drugs were helping me in life. This, this, those idols, basically. That, mm. That's what they are, idols. I thought marijuana was taming the pain in my back, which is true, but it's kind of like we give food to demons inside of us. Yeah. And when we stop giving that food, they are tormenting us with the pain and stuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I started dragging my friend, believing that I was doing a good thing. Mm. After a year of doing drugs, we became so skinny, we didn't even care about food anymore. We were just drinking so much and smoking and doing every kind of drug to imagine, but not crystal meth. So I keep my promise and I'm a good person. <laughs> In my mind, I'm a good guy. <laughs> so I remember this day, it's Sunday, he doesn't go to work. And as soon as we wake up, it was very early, we start drinking, uh, smoking lots of pot, like killing ourselves. Like uh, around noon, 1 p.m., we couldn't move and we start eating magic mushroom. Mm. Then in order to get some energy, we were doing cocaine. Mm. Then we smoked DMT, which is like a very powerful psychedelic. So you can imagine by the end of the night, we are totally fried that we can't do any drugs anymore because we are... We cannot move anymore. I'm on one couch. My mm. roommate is in the other couch. And we can't even talk to each other because mm. we are totally gone. Wow. So the, this guy, I don't know, we managed to go to the bathroom. He decided to go to the bathroom. And he never came back to the room. And then when my testimony starts, because the same voice I heard that told me I was praying when I was little, started mm. telling me now to go to the bathroom. I started giving me vision of my roommate in the bathroom in the floor. I could see him laying on the floor, full of blood. Mm. I didn't know how to move, but I wanted to obey that voice. And as soon as I let my foot touch in the ground, I was totally sober. Wow. Mm. Now I'm totally sober, like I never done drugs. I, I can walk, I can go to the bathroom, and on the way to the bathroom, I already know what I'm going to find. And there it is, the body of my roommate. He, he's totally unconscious. His feet were turning blue. His lips were like purple. His body was tidied out and he was covered in blood. Yeah. Basically, he was sitting in the bathroom and he passed out and he hit his head in the floor. Mm. And I don't know for how many hours his body was, you know, crumbled in the, in, in the ground so he couldn't breathe. Mm -hmm. When I look at his body, I finally realized that I'm not a good person. Mm. 
Mm. Well, all, all, all the feeling were, were, it's like somebody stabbed my heart with love. Mm. And now I can start feeling love and I have love for my roommate and this guy is dead and I killed him. Mm. Now I can see I'm not a good person. I, I didn't help him. I spent his money to kill this guy. Mm. I spent his own money to buy drugs, to drug him. Mm. I didn't keep the promise. This guy came out of jail and he want to have a better life and he trusted me. Mm. He put his life in my hand and what I did is killing him. Mm. And I can see finally for the first time that I'm a sinner. Mm. So now I want to make it up and I try to reanimate him. I try to pump his heart, slap him. Mm. And I still remember the moment of his lifeless body. He didn't come back. I was, mm. I was struggling so much to bring him up. He didn't come back. Mm. Huh. I think after 20 minutes, minute after half hour, I start hear the same voice again. It's like, put some water on his neck. So I, I was so panicking that I didn't even have water in my two fingers. I just touched his neck and this guy all of a sudden comes back from me. Mm. I believe he was there. He just <gasps> started breathing and looking at me. And at that point, mm. I feel this love I never felt coming out of me. Oh. I never loved anybody like this. I just grab his head. I'm hugging him. I start crying. And the, while I'm looking at him, I said, bro, this is my fault. I'm so sorry. We're going to stop doing drugs right now. You just came back from the dead. This is my fault. And I'm so sorry. And mm. there was so much love coming out of me. Mm. that He was embarrassed. I was hugging him like, <laughs> you know, and he was so uncomfortable. They look yeah. at me and tell me, shut up. I just mm. had the blood pressure. <laughs> I know myself. I used to do heroin and I had the blood pressure. At that point, I got very upset because I was struggling for hours to to get to the bathroom mm-hmm. and to see. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Most of the time, I passed, passed away and uh, this guy was dead in the floor and I don't know mm-hmm. how to explain to him. I, don't, I have no words to explain to this guy what happened and I just tell him, look, your feet are still blue. You're covered in blood. You don't know what happened, but you just came back from the dead. Mm-hmm. You were dead, and as, as I yelled at him, he was start shaking. Mm. Mm. I, I believe I gave him seizure. Mm. But now, later on, I realized he was manifesting. Yeah. Mm. You know? Yeah. So he refused me to call the amb- an ambulance, and I spent the whole night supervising him because now I have this much love for everybody. I don't know what happened to me. <laughs> My heart is so open to love, and I want to love this guy. I finally want to take care of him for real. Mm. And he's on the couch and I supervise him the whole night because I was afraid that he had a concussion. Mm. Mm. Next next day he goes back to work, he comes back. The day after we of course forget everything. We mm. go and buy more drugs. Mm. On the way of the supermarket to buy beers, I left him to pay for those beers and I went outside to pick cigarettes in the floor in the ground. Look how messed up I was to mix with the drugs mm. and uh, this guy doesn't come out I'm mm. waiting 10 minutes 15 minutes 20 minutes and all of a sudden I see him walking very slow mm. and I start yelling at him he's like why, why do you make me wait what did you do he said I passed it out then I said did you eat head first he said no he was so embarrassed for two nights ago that he didn't want to tell me he hit head first mm. So when he come out and he see me, as soon as he get closer to me, he couldn't handle being around me. Mm. Mm. So he sat on the wall. He said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit right here right now because I, I feel tired. Mm. And he blacks out. Mm. As he blacks out, I try to reanimate him, but he doesn't, doesn't wake up. So now I have all the people looking at us, and I don't want those people to call cops on me because <laughs> this guy's dying in my hand. You know, that's how it looked like. And I start yelling, call an ambulance, call an ambulance. This guy wakes up out of the blue and tells me, don't call any ambulance, I'm doing just fine. Huh. As soon as I turn my head and I yell at him with the authority again, this, this guy starts trembling. Huh. Mm. So I don't know what happened. I think I'm giving him seizure again and I start getting confused. But in reality, it's like he was manifesting again. Mm. And those demons, for some reason, were afraid of me. Mm. I didn't even know I already... The Lord probably already anointed me to do something and I didn't know. Mm. So what happened is that on the way back home, uh, 
I decided to do drugs in my home. <laughs> and uh, I remember me, I started I start smoking the first joint and this random video on YouTube popped to my face, like the light was coming out of <laughs> the screen of the computer. And something told me, look at it, look at it. And, and it was like, yoga is dangerous. Wow. I was shocked that yoga is dangerous. <laughs> I, I've just finished to do yoga. You know, and I start watching testimony after testimony after testimony. I couldn't stop all people getting possessed by doing yoga. Yeah. And this is a total new world for me. I was in shock looking testimony. I think I spent one week wow. just looking at testimony of people in yoga. I ended up watching rituals in India about Hinduism. And the Lord opened my spiritual eyes so much that I could see demons entering people. Mm. Mm. You know, and start prophesizing in a demonic way. I could see everything you now. My my spiritual eyes are so open. That... Mm. So my roommate was coming back home and he was mocking me. He was telling me, stop watching this video because you're losing your mind and this is my house. You know, I need to use the computer too, but I couldn't stop. Mm. I was just hiding from him. And as soon as he got to sleep, I'm all the night watching those testimony. Mm. I remember all of a sudden he shifted those testimony to deliverance. Mm. Mm. Now those video deliverance are popping to my face in baptism and people speaking in tongue. And as soon as I hear people speaking in tongue, I'm, I'm crying like a baby. I cannot stop. Mm. So I'm, I'm searching people speaking in tongue all over the Internet. And I found lots of video about deliverance, uh, repentance. Mm. Uh, the Lord was ministering me through YouTube. Mm. Wow. God. When I understood everything, all the process, I feel this wind coming into the room like shoo, and in less than one second, now I know all the truth. Mm. All the past that was missing in my life now entered my heart. Mm. I, God is right there looking at me. His presence in the room is so powerful that I can't stop trembling. Mm. I cannot breathe. I fell on my knee and all I could say is, like, oh, you're real. You mm. died for me and, and now you're forgiving me. Mm. And I could say this over and over. I, the only word I could say, and I was crying and begging him for mercy. And this is when he gave me all the vision, wow. all, the, all the sin I ever done since I was young. And I was mm. repenting one by one, one by one, one by one. Oh. That point, you know, my roommate came back home. But this time I cannot stop crying. Mm. Yeah. It was quite embarrassing because we are, you know, heavy metal player. We never <laughs> cry. We are tough men. Yeah. Yeah. But now we come back home and I cannot hold the tears. And ah, I'm <laughs> crying. He sits next to me and look at me and he starts laughing at me. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what to do, but something pushed my head to turn and look at him. And as soon as I look his eyes, I see something behind his eye try to hide from me. This is crazy because I know I see now demons and I know in my spirit that they know that I saw them and happened so fast that <gasps> I'm in shock and all of a sudden I command them to leave. Wow. I saw you. You're going to leave my roommate right now. You mm. cannot live inside of him anymore. You're going to leave right now with this boldness I never had. Mm. And there was also fear trying to cripple in. The fear was telling me, your roommate is going to think that you're totally insane now. Mm -hmm. This was the voice of the devil. So that yeah. night I learned how to discern both voices. Yeah. And all of a sudden I didn't stop doing it. My roommate became so tight like a statue. Hmm. After 10 minutes he opened his mouth. And said, this huge scream. And we saw something came out of his mouth. Wow. And all of a sudden quiet. Hmm. And we both look at each other in shock. And he was so shocked. Hmm. As soon as I touch him, he's speaking, to his tongue exploded. It's like, shut up, da, 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 da. Oh. At that point, I just jump out of the chair. I start yelling, hallelujah, Lord. <laughs> this is what you're going to do now. Take my life right now. I'm mm -hmm. giving you my life right now. This is going to do until I, I feel my last breath. Mm -hmm. And my roommate was so shocked. He looked at me and was like, this word is not what seems to be. This word is crazy. Yeah. Hmm. I said, Hallelujah, you opened his eyes right now. Yeah. Amen. Wow. So, Praise God. Praise God. Yeah, so since that day, he showed me my shirts with skull were cursing my brother. So I threw away all the shirt. He told me, Why are you piercing my body? I was already crucified once. And mm -hmm. I took all the rings away from my face. Mm -hmm. I was fully piercing. Mm -hmm. um, I remember. In my spirit, I knew I had to give up all the music. Mm. So I tried to play a worship music, 
as soon as I played that song. I, I fell on the ground with my knee. I turned my head and I see the cross right to my head. Mm. The craziest thing I ever seen is that I was on the cross and the shape of the corners was roundish. I could see the color and on the top corner, the color was uh, brownish. There was the blood and the craziest thing I could do was smell it. And that day I thought I was going to die. Mm-hmm. I was just on my knee, I could barely breathe, and <gasps> uh, 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 the, the tears were coming out. So mm-hmm. in a way I never cried, and this lasted three, four hours. Wow. And I think that day the Lord delivered me from lots of demons. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's God. That's awesome. Yeah. And then it's just cool just hearing your story because it reminds me of like the people it's like once I was blind but now I see like you were so blinded in your sin thinking you're a good person and I love that part of your story when you saw your friend dying you're like wait I'm not a good person and that's what we see in so many people's testimonies they have to be at the end of themselves and see that wait I'm not a good person I am a sinner and I am desperately wicked and deceitful right people say follow your heart but it's like your heart is so desperately wicked, deceitful. It deceives you, right? Because that's what was happening to you. And so it's just cool because a lot of people too, they don't believe that drugs open the door to the demonic. But pharmakia, that's another word for it in Greek. And that is like where we get pharmacy. So drugs, they really do open the door to the demonic and spiritual realm. And you saw that firsthand. But there's so many people out there who don't believe that. They think, oh, I can I can smoke weed. I can, you know, do this drug. And it's not going to affect me. But what would you say to the people, like, that like, oh, I'm, it, I'm, it does? Oh, I'm casting demons of pharmacia every day. I used to smoke pot. And I was telling people my excuse was because pot was taking back pain mm. away. So for me, I pot became an yeah. idol. Mm. And we know that God hates Amen. idols. Amen. So he's the only healer. He's the only savior, right? Mm-hmm. He's the only one who will give you a revelation. And I replaced all of those things that God wanted to give me with the pot, with the drugs, with the alcohol, with the farm. It's like if I have a pain, I go to the doctor and I put all of my trust on yeah. him. Mm-hmm. And I take the medicine that he gave me, which will take a pain away for a uh, for few yeah. hours. Then I need more and more. But I see healing now every day. Jesus is healing people every day. Today we were at Walmart and in 10 minutes, five people got healed. Knee pain, back pain, heart surgery, you know, heart failures. And uh, we see all kinds of healing. And he's the only one who can do this. So Satan knows very well how to grieve the spirit of Mm -hmm. God. You know, and God loves us so much that when we do something like that, we are breaking his heart. Mm -hmm. And then Satan makes us believe that God hates us. In reality, God is just stretching his hand to try and, you know, to try and tell us something yeah. so we can come back to him. Yeah. But we are so deceived, like you said, that we cannot see. That's why Jesus said, I came for the brokenhearted. Amen. Mm-hmm. He didn't come for the self-righteous. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Righteous, they don't need to learn anything. They know everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, they are the best, they are perfect, so they don't need anything. But I'm telling you, when they go and sleep at night, before they sleep, they know their heart is broken. Yep, mm-hmm. exactly. Because we were made in His own image. Mm-hmm. You know, So lots of people are lying to themselves, as I was lying to myself. Yep. Yeah. So what has it been like now? Because before you said you did not feel loved, you didn't feel like you felt rejected. So how is it now being in Christ? You, I th- think you've been saved since, was it last January? January, yeah, last January. So what has it been like now, and and what are you doing? You said you travel and you're able to pray for people to be healed and stuff, but what does it look like for you now? Um, You know, the uh, the Holy Spirit is telling me this. It's kind of like we we love you because you loved us first. Mm. So he came here to show me the real love. We are looking for the carnal love in this world, which is demonic. Exactly. It will lead us to the last of the flesh, you know, in yeah. any way. We will get deceived in any way. Yeah. Uh, but one second of an encounter with Jesus changed my life forever. Why? Because I felt the real love. Mm-hmm. And I immediately recognized that love. That was the first love we always had, mm-hmm. you know, before we got deceived into this demonic world. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So... That's why now I can love and be loved because he showed me love first. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I don't know if it makes sense. Oh, yeah, that definitely yeah. makes sense. And 
it's cool too because so many times people don't feel close to the Lord because they think they are using him to feel good but like what you have to experience too probably even just traveling around it's like that doesn't mean everything's going to still be easy but the cool thing is now we have the presence of God with us and he says he'll never leave us or forsake us but I think the sad thing is a lot of people they get saved right and they get excited but then there's still pain and problems and so they run back to their drugs and alcohol instead of running to the Lord for help and crying out to it for um, his Holy Spirit to fill us so what does it look like for you if you do experience pain now and how do you handle uh, it you know the Lord needs love still we are selfish if we ask love every day, but we don't love. Exactly. So you need love too. Mm-hmm. We need to walk with them. We have a. We need to have a relationship with them. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, it doesn't work. You know, he. Uh, in the beginning, he created man, and he was walking in the garden with man. Mm-hmm. That's what he want from us. He want to walk with us again mm-hmm. into the garden of eternal life. Mm-hmm. And if we don't understand what he meant by that, we will never understand who God really is. Exactly. So. Uh, Basically, I had back pain until a year I got saved. Mm. He healed me three months ago, but I never stopped walking with him because he was testing my faith. You know, um, why? Because I believed if he healed me right on the spot, I would have fell back on the same Mm. kind of life. And what he told me is amazing because you remember I was vegan, right? Mm -hmm. The reason why I was vegan, because I made a covenant with this girl. He showed me later because I didn't know I made a covenant. So this girl told me, uh, you know, people who eat meat turn me off. So if you want to be my boyfriend, you're going to stop eating meat. Mm -hmm. And I said, all right, sure. So I made a covenant with her. I became vegan because of her, not because of the desire in my heart. Mm -hmm. And uh, I I was in prayer. I was fasting and said, Lord, why you don't take the pain away from me? Mm -hmm. You are healing people through my hand, but I still have the back pain. And they said, eat meat. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. Eat meat for weeks. I could eat meat mm-hmm. and it was so hard for me. It's like, what does that mean? Yeah. And bam, the revelation came to my mind and they showed me why I had to eat meat. And one day I just take a piece of chicken. It's like, <laughs> all right, Lord, this is a covenant I made to you. I'm removing all the covenant I made with anyone, consciously and unconsciously. As soon as I hit the piece of meat, I just boil in tears. Wow. I think it was delivering me. But the pain was still there, and I was still struggling. It's like, why the pain is still there? As I read the Bible, <laughs> this verse popped to my face. Like, is this a shame for a man to cover his head? It's like, why well, I had to cut my hair. <laughs> How long so was I your immediately, hair? My hair was long as yours, even wow, longer than yours. there you go. That's great. I always said long hair. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I went to the room. I called my friends. like, hey, I'm cutting my hair right now. I'm renounced about all the covenant I made with the lust, with the shame, with the every, uh, you know, it reminded me why I started grooming my hair in the first place. Mm. Because I want to have girls, I wanted to cover my face because the enemy made me look ugly. Mm. When I looked to myself in the mirror, I looked ugly, mm. unless I was doing drugs, you know. Mm. Uh, so I, I cut my hair and I renounced all of those things. And guess what? The pain was slowly leaving me. Mm. There was one more thing missing and that was pride. Mm. And uh, the first time I get rebuked from elders, there was a battle inside of my flesh. I didn't want to believe I was that guy they were telling me I was, right? Mm. Yeah. And so the old man was washed away, but my old life was still coming back, trying coming back to me. Mm. So this was my fate to prove God that I really want to deny myself. This is where come the... To play the fact that Jesus said, deny yourself daily and pick up your cross. So Mm -hmm. he's giving us life. He's giving us everything, forgiveness. He died for us, but now is our turn to prove to him that we really want to follow him. You know, and as soon as I denied myself, it took me a month or two, but I, I went back to the elders. I asked forgiveness. As soon as I did that, the Lord led me to fast for 23 days. Mm-hmm. I could hear this number 23, 23 every day. I didn't know what it was. Then a friend of mine called me and she tells me, the Lord wanted you to fast. I was driving. I started crying and trembling mm-hmm. while I'm driving. He said, like, all right, I'll call you later. Ah. Uh-huh. All right. So when you wanted me to fast, he told me exactly the day and the month, mm-hmm. 11 November. I started fasting and I realized it was 11, 11 when I started. Mm-hmm. And I had the 23 in my mind, but my friend told me 40. And my fast was, Lord, I want to hear your voice. Mm. I want to hear your voice. That's why I'm fasting. So 
two days passed by, one week passed by, two weeks passed by, headaches, all of these symptoms, uh, three weeks passed by, four weeks passed by, it's like, and I don't hear his voice. It's the last day today, right? 23rd day, and I start listening, this voice start coming to my head, 240. And I had the vision of me going around saying to people, hey, I'm doing 40 like Jesus. <laughs> uh, I'm calling my mom, hey, I'm doing 40 like Jesus. Mm. That was the pride, yeah. Yeah. the exact same pride that the, my friend was telling me I had. But now the enemy is trying to tempt me with the same pride. But now I see mm -hmm. because I'm fasting and my flesh is dying and my spirit is stronger mm -hmm. and I can see that pride. And I said, all right, Lord, you told me 23. I'm going to stop fasting right now. I'm sharing a communion. I thank you. Even if you didn't speak to me, I still love you. Mm. I, I share the communion and I hear, well done. Mm. Mm. And I was just boiling on, crying like a baby. Yeah. Well done. I heard this voice and I realized that if I did 40, that was giving me pride back because yeah. I'm going to obey his voice, not yeah. the Satan, not the pride voice. Mm -hmm. After a week, I realized I had no pain anymore. Wow. I was like, what? I, I was sleeping and I couldn't do several movements, but now I can sleep and say, what just happened? Mm. So he healed me while I was fasting. Wow. I didn't even realize wow. that. Mm. Praise God. And because I obeyed his voice, since that day, I, uh, I cast the demons out and they are not going out after 20 minutes. They go out after a minute. Mm. Um, I can hear him better. I can. I have a word of knowledge for people when I meet them. It's mm. like, it is true what John said, something very interesting. He said, uh, I'm going to get weaker, you're going to get stronger. Amen, mm. amen. So when we fa uh, Jesus said, when you fast, you know, when we fast, uh, our body is getting weaker, our flesh is getting weaker, and is trying to still control in us, but... Uh, if we if we finish the mission that God assigned us, like fasting for 40 days, whatever they tell you, mm -hmm. something is happening. Mm -hmm. the, our body is giving up. We say, okay, I surrender. And mm -hmm. our spirit starts getting stronger. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's kind of like when we see people in the hospital, they are terminal, cancer, or whatever. They are more spiritual than any of us because they are closer to God. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Their flesh is dying. Exactly. You know, that's why they have vision and dreams and... And this is what happened when we fast. We are we want to get closer to God. We we want to deny ourselves, and we want to give more room for Him to fill ourselves, so we can use us as a vessel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and God wants us. To, oh, sorry. God wants us to be mm -hmm. broken and contrite. He always tells us that, and that's why mm -hmm. I love it when you see people who will humble themselves, because so many times. We are stiff-necked and stubborn like mules, but we don't want to be led by pain or he doesn't want to let us go through pain or by bit or bridle, but he wants us to humble ourselves. So mm -hmm. uh, just seeing through your life, all it really is is just God tells you to do something. You're like, okay, God, even though you don't feel like it and your flesh is like, no, I don't want to. But you're like, this life, like you realize this is not this is not our own life. Like this is the Lord's and now everything you have is the Lord's. And so there's so many people trying to fulfill these great things, right? To like, I've struggled with that self-righteousness of trying to have people see me like, oh, well, I do this and I do that. And what God's been having to teach you and all of us with pride is humbling us and saying, it's not about what you've done or what you're doing. It's about giving glory to me. So mm -hmm. that's why we're just, it's just amazing to hear stories like yours where it's nothing to boast to Nico. It's only like when we see you, we see the Holy Spirit through mm -hmm. you. And that's what you want. Before mm -hmm. it was people praising Nico. But now it's it's not about you. It's All about the, the Lord. Goes, amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We love God. that. Morgan, you're going to say something? Yeah. There, yeah. Well, that verse that you're talking yeah. about, John 3.30, he must increase, but I must decrease. I must decrease. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. And that's what we need. I think of all the different things that you were delivered from. Yeah. And a lot of people have things that they think, oh, it's not too bad. Like, oh. You know, because maybe maybe um, being a vegetarian or a vegan might not be bad for them. Maybe it's not an idol to them. But so so we can try to justify things sometimes, you know. But we need to ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, search me. What Where is any place that I have made a covenant maybe? Or maybe I have idolized something before you. And uh, Stephen Bancar is actually, he did a, 
uh, good video that I, he actually spoke that at our church about occult objects mm-hmm. and different things like that. And we need to, like you're saying, like my life is yours. God, take everything. You know, like you're yeah. you're saying, you know, you look at the things of this world now and you're like, I don't I don't like any of it. You know, I don't want any of it. I just want Jesus. And and when we come from a place of that, and maybe we feel weak at times, God's able to be our strength. And I just, there's so many uh, Bible stories and different things that were coming up as you're talking, you know, even, you know, even with the meat, you know, Peter, and, you know, before God, you know, yeah, yeah. and the Lord's like, Tell take me. and eat, you know. And so we need to make sure that we aren't, aren't just doing things to be spiritual. Mm-hmm. I really liked how you said that about fasting for 40 days. Sometimes we're like, oh, that's more, so that's better, you know? But then we need to see, ask the Lord where our heart is, where our intentions are, because if our intentions are bad, then we could just be like the Pharisees. We could be self-righteous, and self-righteousness and pride are the two things that keep us in deception. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, it's really cool how you got out of that deception and yeah, yeah so how would you how did you help people to get out of that deception? Because when you're deceived, you don't know it, right? Exactly. <laughs> so yeah. would you just tell them um, to pray? pray for yeah. Them. No, what I do, I just uh, I leave as a testimony. Now mm. people can see the Christ in me. Mm-hmm. I know what they think about me. Lots of people think I'm insane. I I did some heavy drugs and I left this million dollar band to. Yeah. To heal the sick in the street, and I mm. believe in this fairy tale. So, yeah, I think you're crazy. I'm telling you, there are wives of rock stars that they know that they are calling me, mm-hmm. that they want to baptize themselves. Mm-hmm. I want to follow Jesus. I want to have exactly what you have. Wow. I want to be like you. I see the joy in your heart. Mm. Can I baptize myself? So I'm start <laughs> preaching to them, you know, and they cannot say the word Jesus because demons don't like them and yeah. they start to understand the truth, you know. And mm-hmm. So I know the Lord is using me as a testimony. Yeah. Amen. Yep. What Jesus said, they will over- overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Amen. So the Spirit of God is a gentle spirit. He will mm-hmm. never force anyone Amen. because mm-hmm. why, why in the first place He gave us the free will? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Amen. He gave us the free will because He want to see if we love Him for real. So I'm not going out like the first time I saw Jesus, I was in the face of people, Jesus is real. Yeah. I got persecuted immediately the yeah. first day. Yeah. Mm. I'm just walking as Jesus was walking and mm. some people want to follow me. Mm-hmm. That's all we do. And we make disciples. That's what Jesus commanded mm-hmm. us to do. Mm-hmm. Before people idolize him, he's like, hey, you can do this too. Yep. I want to show you something. And as soon as we baptize them, I bring them with me and I make them heal in the sick. So when they see that God used them, you know, they are stopping idolizing me. They start worshiping God. Yeah. Amen. Praise Amen. God. I love that. And it's cool, so, too, because so many times people, they think, oh, that all that stuff was back in the Bible times. It's not for us now. And it's like, no, God is the same yesterday, today and forever. He still heals. There's still demons that can be cast out in Jesus name. Like we believe in word of knowledge, prophecy. So it's just cool to see that it's not something that you're using to glorify yourself because a lot of ministries, Mm -hmm. people, they don't like healing and stuff because there have been some people who take it and then make it where they make money off even that, which is so sick. But it's cool to see what you're doing where it's like, you're not forcing anything. You're just going mm-hmm. by the flow of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, God, you want me to go here? Like you were supposed to go to Texas and you're still in Florida and you're like, here I am, Lord, just send me, use me. And it's, it's exactly it's like the book of the yeah. Acts. Mm-hmm. You know, I have a little story if you allow me. Do yes. we have time? Yes, for yeah, it? you can share. So I have many stories that really will blow people's mind away because when God starts providing, there are things that are happening that are out of this world. And mm-hmm. I'm still making up my mind like getting revelation after revelation every day about what he does for me and you know it's difficult to accept all of his goodness because there is still some work i have to do in my heart i want to be like jesus now so two weeks ago i know i can share these testimonies about money but i have to because this is about obedience so two weeks ago a friend of mine just had a baby and I know he need money, right? He sent me $700 on my account. And as soon as I look at my account and say, no, mm. 
what is he doing? Why send me money? He's crazy. Mm. He needs more than me. He has a baby. You know, I'm I'm alone in my van, so I can do just fine. I didn't want to call him. I didn't know why this money were coming in. And I was in a restaurant with my friend Daquania. Mm. So we decided to go and heal the sick. And we ended up on the beach. She said, let's go to the beach. I didn't really want to go because mm. I don't want to minister to naked people. Mm. <laughs> yeah. But... I wanted to obey for some reason. I knew I had to be on the beach. So we ended up looking the waves. As soon as I turn my head, I see this lady with a pizza pump coming out of her chest. Mm. She just had the surgery. Mm. So I immediately felt we should go and talk to that lady. Mm. So before I tell you this testimony, as soon as I get the money, there was a guy from India writing me on Facebook telling me, my sister is going to get married. We bought lots of things. We still have need money to buy more things. Hmm. And I immediately replied to him, you said you bought lots of things, what else you want? And I just blocked him because I have hundreds of people asking me money daily and I live in my van, you know, so yeah. people don't know. But when I met this lady, we asked her why she had all of this tape and pumps and she said, I had 10 surgery, I have skin problem. Hmm. So we prayed for her. She got delivered from cigarette, and I believe she got healed from the skin cancer wow. or whatever she wow. had, right? So then the Lord told me to ask her, if Jesus was here right now, what he would ask? She was so humble. She said, I want my friend baby to be born healthy. And my friend, the Kwanya, immediately said, no, it's about you. What are you asking Jesus right now? She said, I want my friend's baby to be born healthy. My friend, the Kwanya, immediately said, no, it's about mm-hmm. you. Now it's about you, ask for yourself something. And she said, well, I want to marry my fiancé to honor God. And he's epileptic. I want to give him a good life because he's not going to live that long. Mm -hmm. He has seizures every day. And she said, we don't need anything. You remember the first guy from India? She said, he said, we need lots of things for the wedding of my sister. Mm -hmm. Now it's about another wedding. And she said, we don't need anything. The only thing we need is to bring his parents from Alabama to Florida, and I said, how much do you need? She told me exactly the same amount that my friend sent wow. me. Wow. At that point, right, I know it's the Lord, mm-hmm. but how do I know it's the Lord? Because I don't want to do it. I don't exactly. want to give up this money, right? <laughs> and that's the Lord. Yeah. So I said, wait right here, all right? I'm going to go and get something for you. Mm-hmm. She started crying. She knew what happened. And basically, she was praying God to give her the money to get married, and there are two guys living with her. They were mocking her every day. It's like, when God is going to give you the money? Mm. And now she sees that God is answering her prayer. So she feels her is present. Mm. Oh. I'm going to the bank. And I said to my head, Lord, I'm going to give her $100. And then I'm going to go uh, and make a GoFound account. The Lord was convicting me. He's like, all right, I'm going to give her $300 and do a GoFound account. And the Lord was convicting me. So I called the guy that gave me the money. And they said, Bro, why did you give me all of this money? You have a kid. And what he told me just shocked me. He said, uh, those money don't belong to me. Those money belong to Jesus, mm-hmm. and he knows what you are going to do with uh-huh. them. I close the phone, I take the money, I go back, and I give the money to her, and I tell her, go and get married. Mm-hmm. She starts crying like, uh, I know it's God. I know God sent you. I know God sent you because this was my prayer for a long time. So because I obeyed God, God opened a door in her family. Her mom got healed that day. She decided to get baptized. Her boyfriend decided to get baptized. So we baptized both of them. Her boyfriend had some problem in his mind. You can tell he has a problem. He cannot speak. He has seizure. He doesn't know how to repent. At some point, after an hour, we were struggling. We asked him, do you have any pain in your body? He said, yeah, I have pain all over. So we prayed for him. He got healed. Mm. And now we know God is real. He started confessing everything. As soon as I touched him, he fell to the ground. And when he wakes up, he mm. starts yelling, I can breathe. I'm healed from epilepsy. Wow. I can breathe. And he was totally healed. We baptized them. They go back home. And those people were mocking her because... God didn't give her the money. They saw all of these miracles. Now they all want to get baptized. Mm. We went back home and baptized two more people, and demons were coming out of these people. Wow. So they asked us to kickstart them, to teach them how to heal the sick. Yeah. Well, Jesus is doing it. We just showed them how to lay hands, basically, mm. and obey him. So 
They invited us to this restaurant. This is funny because as soon as we entered the restaurant, everyone in the restaurant was sick. Oh. Mm. I was like, all right, Lord. <laughs> I, I know this is you orchestrating yeah. everything, right? So with that uh, little obedience, four people got baptized. Mm. Uh, this lady in a wheelchair got healed. So the, the lady that worked at the restaurant saw the miracle. Now she want to get baptized. Mm. And she asked us to pray for her boyfriend, who is a tattoo artist, and he's tormented. Mm. So we set an appointment the next day in the restaurant. They both got delivered in front of everyone. Oh. They cried in the restaurant, boiling like demons were coming out of them. <laughs> she got baptized. Her boyfriend still doesn't get baptized, but I'm looking forward to it. Why? Because that couple will get married by the end of the month, and we will preach the gospel to the whole town. Mm. So that little obedience wow. opened the door to lots of people who got saved. Amen. Amen. Er, and so it, this is the opposite of what some pastors are exactly. doing. When God gives you money, you're going to know what to do with this money because we money for us has no value. Yeah. Mm. We don't worship money. We worship in God, the living God, and He's in control of everything, and He will provide anything we need. Amen. 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 And that story reminds me of the Samaritan woman when the Jesus, he, he told her her sin. He told her as, about how she was living with a man that was not her husband, and she had five husbands, and she's like, you must be a prophet. And then she told the whole town. And so it, mm -hmm. it, that's what it reminds me of is just like, and then the disciples were like, are you hungry? And then he was saying, my meat is to do the will of God. Speaking of, we were talking about meat. It's just cool, like, seeing that in your life. Like you said, mm -hmm. you just want to live like Jesus. And that doesn't mean you're perfect because people might think, well, if you can do what you can do, Nico, you must be perfect and everything's good in your life. And I love that sanctification is a process. So the day we die, God's going to be refining you. He's mm -hmm. going to be telling you to give up things. He's going to be telling you. He's going to be breaking you of some more things and delivering you even. And so even though people see a person like you maybe praying for people to be healed or delivered, they maybe can think, oh, wow, then his life is all, like, great, and there's nothing wrong. And it's like, but if anything, you realize you have to be filled with the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. constantly because Satan wants to take you out. And so that's why we'll definitely be praying for you and what mm -hmm. you're doing, and yeah. we want to be able to yeah. support you in any way we can. Mm -hmm. But uh, anything else we, you would like to share with our listeners? Anything else you would like to share with our listeners? Yeah, I would like to share and encourage people to to give up everything to follow exactly. Jesus. Anything that basically become your own prison. Exactly. And music for me was an yeah. idol. Yeah. I, I lived to play music, and mm. if I didn't play music anymore, I didn't know what to mm. do. I had no purpose in life, and people recognized me as a musician, and I had no love. I had... Everything people dream daily, but there is no love there. There are just idols and dodgeps, and mm -hmm. there is no reason to waste our life to follow things that are not from God. Mm -hmm. um, the same day that I was going to become homeless, mm -hmm. I had a little prayer. It's like, Lord, it would be good if I had a van, because tomorrow I will be homeless. This guy came to me with the keys in his hand, and he told me, that's your van. Uh -huh. <laughs> And they told me, freely you receive, freely you give. I was traveling from New Hampshire to Montana, mm -hmm. actually to North Carolina. After four hours traveling, my van breaks down. Mm -hmm. I was with my friend Valen again, and we didn't even care about the van that breaks down, right? We just ended up praying for people on the freeway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and one guy got baptized that wow. day. Wow, praise God. His friend tells him me that basically I need $1,000 to fix my van because... The red axe is totally broken. I just take the key and I gave it to him. Mm -hmm. Take this van, it's yours. He gave me like a scrapyard value, but I just gave it to him because the guy who gave it to me told me, freely you receive and freely you mm -hmm. give. And this guy was all happy. Wow, hallelujah, what Jesus wanted me to do with this van? So I had no van again. <laughs> yep. After an hour, a guy I never met calls us and asks us if we need anything. He donated to me the money to get the van I actually own now. Wow. Praise God. So Jesus gave me two vans in one day. He was <laughs> testing my faith. So I drive to L.A. to baptize a friend. I baptize my friend in law in the ocean. I park my van in Santa Monica, which is a very expensive area. And I found a free spot, but you cannot stay there for that long. I go back to turn my van on to leave. My van doesn't go on. Mm. 
it doesn't go on and I get stuck on this parking lot for two days. And next day, the cop are going to take my van away from me and they have no money to to get it back. So I get very nervous and at night I felt glad to go on the beach. I have my heel plugs. I try to learn how this camera works. I'm on the beach, no one on the beach. And there is only, only this guy totally collapsed on the beach with his bicycle on top of him mm. and his wife looking at him on the bench. Mm. That voice again telling me, go and ask if they need help. At that point, I had a battle. It's like, I'm the one who needs help now. I need to figure it out how to fix my van. Yeah. You know, tomorrow I will be homeless again. I say, all right, I will obey you. <laughs> I turn and I ask immediately, do you guys need help? She said, no, we don't need help. We are fine. I say, all right, thank you, thank you. And I leave. The guy on the ground, he found the strength to rise his head and yell at me. He was totally drunk. Mm. And... I don't know how he done, but he yelled at me. He wanted to kill me. He's a gang member. Now he wanted to kill me because I spoke with his wife. Mm. Uh. Something pushed me from behind. And as soon as I arrived next to him, he became like a piece of statue again. So I knew I had to cast demons out of him. Mm. I immediately commanded the spirit of addiction and death to leave him. In one minute, he was set free. His wife started crying. He begged me to preach the gospel. I preached the gospel. He started crying and confessing all of his sin. Mm. This in 10 minutes. Ten minutes later, I baptized him in the ocean. This guy doesn't want to come back from the water. So I had to force him to come back from the water. And he said, put me back on the water. I see in the light. Mm. <laughs> so then he tells me, how did you find me? Today I tried to kill myself mm. jumping out of the freeway bridge. And my friend saved him and I punched him. Then I came here to finish myself. Mm. How did you find me? Huh. And I said, well, my van broke down. So you had to thank my van. <laughs> yeah. He said, guess what? My cousin is mechanic, and he will fix your van tomorrow morning at 7. It's like, whoa, wow. this is the Lord. This is the Lord. Must be the Lord, mm-hmm. right? So the funny thing that I called AAA. I called mechanics, and they couldn't figure it out what it was. Mm-hmm. His cousin came to fix my van, and as, as soon as I put my key inside to prove it that doesn't work, my van goes wow. on. Wow. So remember, my van broke down twice and two guys got baptized. This reminds me when the Lord had to stop the donkey <laughs> with an yeah, angel, right? Because the guy didn't want to listen mm-hmm. to him. Mm-hmm. And that's when I realized I had to learn how to discern his voice and listen and obey to him. Otherwise, he's going to stop my van. Yep. He's going to do what <laughs> I have to do, you know, in order to bring glory to him no matter what. Yeah. So I just wanted to share this. Wow. That's awesome. Oh, we love your stories. And you have a YouTube channel that you're just starting now. Um, or have you had it for a while now or what is, how long have you had uh, it? I think I had this channel from five, five months now. The Lord told me to start the channel. He provided me a laptop, a camera. I never used the camera. The way I got the software and the knowledge is just unreal. And I start, basically I didn't want to do videos because I didn't know how to edit and I don't have a software. And the guy out of the blue called me. He's like, do you need a software to do videos? I go, all right. Uh-huh. And 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 then I said, Lord, it would be cool if I get trained by the guy who made the TLR movie, mm-hmm. the Last Reformation movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, two days later, a friend of mine, Mike, called me from Texas. Said, hey, are you in Texas? Yeah, you should come to my house because the guy who made the TLR movie is in my house. Wow. Mm-hmm. So I can tell the Lord was orchestrating all of this again for me. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I go to Oklahoma to kickstart this sister, Melissa, with her boyfriend, Daniel. And I had the camera with me. I didn't want to bring it with me, but they told me, bring the camera with you. Mm. I don't know how to use it. Just bring it. <laughs> and they told me to push the record <coughs> button. So we were in a supermarket healing the sick, and I started recording everything. And when I went back, I realized that I had the first video already made. Mm. And the Lord was working through me mm. to edit the video. So... Those videos on YouTube are start popping out out of the blue. I don't even know how they happen to be wow. there, you know. And That's awesome. Yeah. And oh, I was, I was just going to say, yeah, and we'll make sure to put your YouTube link in the description below so people can subscribe to your channel and mm-hmm. watch your testimony. Thank you. I hope that people that watch this video get inspired. Um, they can see how beautiful our lord really is and how much he loves us that he's using us now to to kick out the king of this world Mm -hmm. out of our brother and sister so they can be filled with light 
and they can feel the love that they felt. Amen. Exactly. Amen. And just what you're doing too is just simple obedience because the Bible says, if you love me, you obey my commands. So I love that you are just living your life like, Lord, what do you want me to do today? Because we think it's always big sins like, oh, I can't fornicate. I can't look at pornography and all this stuff. But like Morgan was saying, and you've been saying, it's the little things. Like the Bible says, the little foxes that spoil the vine. Mm -hmm. It's the little things when God says, hey, I don't want you to speed. And you're like, but I want to go like five miles over the speed limit. But God's convicting you. So I love it. It says in the Bible, what you know not to do and you do it is sin to you. So we need to each one of us, like what you're doing in your life, Lord, what do you have for me today? Not, mm -hmm. I'm not going to worry about tomorrow, but today, what do you want me to do? And just live a life like that. It's easier said than done because we can easily just go based off our agenda and what we want to do. But I love that that's how you're living your life. You're like, mm -hmm. okay, God, what do you want me to do today? But, What's on the... But this is the real le reason why we are alive. Exactly. And I just discovered I'm 45 years yeah. old. It took me 45 years yeah. old, but it's never too Amen. late, you yeah. know, because our God is good. Amen. And yeah, I, I recommend and I want to tell everyone, be led by the Spirit, obey His voice. He's real. He's always with us. Mm -hmm. um, fear are not from God. Exactly. Worries are not from God. Um Amen. Have a Amen. blessed life. Amen. I don't know and that's my favorite verse, Second Timothy 1 7. For the Lord has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but a power, love, and a sound and mind. Love. And so I love that because mm -hmm. that's what God's done in your life. He's given you power and love for Him and others and a sound mind. Before it was filled with demonic voices, but now you just want to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So yeah. before we end, though, Nico, do you want to pray for our listeners and for those people who are maybe struggling? Sure. Awesome. Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm asking you, Father God, to shine a light ahead of all of the people who are lost. The lost sheep that Jesus said, he was leaving the 99 to go and find the lost sheep. I'm sure there is a lost sheep right here watching this. I'm praying that you feel the light and the power of God. I pray that you feel the love of God up in you. I pray that the, you pour your Holy Spirit on him, Father God. and. I pray that you hide them under the shadow of your wings. Also, I want to pray for the person with the back pain. The Lord is telling me that there is someone with the back pain. I command all the pain to leave you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank you, Heavenly Father. I'm asking you to hide everyone under the shadow of your wings and to give a revelation tonight to all the people who are watching this video. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Nico. Thank you for joining us. And we'll have all of your YouTube links and ways that can contact you and support you down below. So everyone, make sure to check that out. But again, thank you so much for yeah, joining us, you. Nico. Thank you so much. I just want to thank you for your patience. I learned a lot from you because you have lots of patience and I know how difficult listening is. So you have a great gift oh, thank because you. listening is better than talking you oh, know? Okay, so you, okay. you have lots of wisdom and the lord is using you in a powerful well, the lord way is also humbling me because if you guys the camera wasn't on me sometimes because i was just coughing over there <laughs> and i'm a talker but because god's allowing this he's humbling me because i usually i need to learn to be quick to listen slow to speak and slow to become angry yeah. so i'm learning that so yeah it's amazing god. how he uses these weaknesses and like you were saying back pain if you didn't have it you might have gone right back you know exactly so he uses mm -hmm. these things and to refine us. even when they were like god this is so bad like how? but he's able to work Amen. and use it for his glory so that's romans 8 28 you were talking yeah. together yeah. but thank you also our amazing is i just met you and i feel i know you from thousands of years <laughs> because we have this exactly amen. amen thank you so much for joining us on calvary conversations if you haven't already, please make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video. If you like to listen to us wherever you get your podcast, just type in Calvary Conversations. You can also follow us on Instagram and see our behind the scenes at Calvary Conversations. Also, make sure to check out our merch in the description below. Thanks so much, guys, and God bless.